Good morning, everyone. So the surprise news is that the Bank of uh, England <clears throat> ended up holding rates, right? Sorry, which was a surprise uh, for maybe 50% of the market as I was reading reports that there was the potential for um, the market to not hike rates, right? So if we go to the UK, there was um, some... Uh, some news out yesterday that was, uh, you know, they were basically saying that potentially it may not, they may not hike, um, yeah, might still raise rates tomorrow and the odds of interest rates falls after inflation drops. So it was a 55% chance down from around 80% the, uh, the previous afternoon. Anyways, um, and so they ended up holding, which <clears throat> on the face of it, should be quite um, dovish. Also as well, um, the Bank of England says CPI inflation to, pause, uh, so to fall significantly further in the near term. So um, yeah, it's not looking great. And it also says here, UK growth likely to be weaker than expected. So low growth, yeah, um, uh, it's CPI to fall, so will the Bank of England really raise raise rates? Are they hawkish? It sounds quite dovish to me. So um, usually, you know, nine times out of uh, 10 or nine, nine times out of 100, um, I would obviously say, you know, look for some short trades, but I would not advise um, looking for short trades really below the two week fair value. Now, on this occasion, this occasion this you know the the, the 0.1 percent um i would maybe make an exception right um because of you know the gravitas of today's news there is actually the um you could actually go down all the way down into like a one minute time frame chart now you might think to yourself well, why would you you know why would you do that why would you go down to a one minute time frame chart and it's really because with with the uh, with the pound, you've got kind of the wind in your sails in terms of um, there being a bit of a surprise. Now, um, you can see that here there is a stop hunt, you know, setting up in terms of uh, you know uh, support there, resistance, very accurate resistance. And that's acting as resistance right there. Now, <clears throat> uh, you know, this is. Uh, oh, this this could be looked at as um, a uh, I say it could be, but it should be looked at as this being an unfair auction, and unfair auctions typically need to be completed, right? And just again for context, remember we are down at these absolute lows, so you know, like I said, buying here is not or selling here or shorting here typically is not advised. Like I said, this just really the the uh, the news and the context of the news now. In terms of um, unfair auctions being uh, filled, sometimes they get filled straight away, sometimes they don't. But what I believe is happening is that the market now is heavily positioned uh, short. And so what can happen is, or what can, um, uh, uh, does happen, is that there's a um, the business model of the market makers is to provide liquidity for the shorts as well as making money, right? Because they have to make money. They can't just automatically take the other side of the, you know, the, the, the trades and not make money themselves. And so while everyone's short, they need to, you know, hunt for liquidity above levels that are manufactured, etc. And so, um, and so with the force of fundamentals, right? Or hopefully the force of fundamentals, you know, in your in your favour, right? Um, liquidity has to be got before prices hopefully continue moving to the downside based off of you know what's happened today and so um, there's there's many ways that you can you know you can um, look to trade this and I would enter into you know just for transparency I've entered into um, a short trade on the uh, pound Aussie as well right I'm I've got in a short somewhere around uh, these these highs somewhere around here. Anyway, I'm, I'm in short, but um, yeah, waiting for the pound. Um, and the reason why is because I saw that prices kind of came up and kind of completed this auction around here near enough 
completed that auction. So once I started to see it was it was completed pretty much, and he saw that bearish move there, that bearish candle in the one minute, I started looking for uh, some short trades. So yeah, I think I entered somewhere around here, but we've got a bit of a wider stop just in case prices do come up, you know, above here to take out all this liquidity before going higher. So <clears throat> I do have a bit of a wider stop. I don't have a tight stop. My stop is somewhere above these highs which is around uh my entry was somewhere around here yeah about you know 43 pips and you might think that's a bit crazy for a one minute chart but <clears throat> at the same time you know the potential is for it to follow through but let me go back to the pound dollar as well and the same applies really to to all pound pairs but i thought pound dollar was was a bit more interesting because it hasn't you know com the auction hasn't completed yet now um yeah, so basically the, the the point in this is that, you know, um, none of us know exactly we want prices. If we're in a short trade, we want prices to, you know, to fall, you know, like a like a brick, basically. But there's a business model going on. And that is basically the market makers uh, have to make money to the upside and to the downside. And they're, they're tasked with providing liquidity and, and completing unfair auctions, right? They're mandated to complete this, right? At some point, it could be soon, it could be later, um, or just make enough money so that even if they don't complete this, um, then they've made enough money, right? Now they do that uh, by, by obviously um, moving the market in directions and searching for liquidity and then moving the, the, the market in a direction that the fundamentals and you know the uh, the, the, the the institutions want right so um as i said you know 99 times out of 100 i would never really recommend anyone really going down to uh um you know selling at lows you can go down into the one minute chart if you want to i don't typically do this but i thought it was just interesting because what you can do is look for short trades in fact around you know a stop hunt around here right and also as well anywhere really around uh, this area here i think uh, would be is going to be really nice for um for looking for sell trades with a stop loss above the that that um uh, this area here right because prices shouldn't really want to go above that area unless obviously um, there's something wrong with the uh, fundamentally changes with, with the dollar right but ultimately what you should find is that um, you know with, with a rate hold um, you know prices should want to go here now um, so, so there is opportunity on that lower time frame at the lows, but again, really small position, as small as you can. Uh, and I would definitely say, um, you know, just take caution. Don't have like tight stops. I mean, there is a, the, 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 you could have, you know, a tight stop if you wanted to, you know, try and maybe enter into a few positions and take a few chances in terms of like a stop hunt. But overall, I would place my stop loss somewhere around these highs with the anticipation of prices going uh, lower. Now, um, as an example, right, of um, auctions being filled and market makers, we had on September the, what was that, the uh, 20th, so that was that was yesterday, it's 21st of the year, um, forget I'm on a one minute chart, we had obviously um, inflation come out year on year for the pound, right, and so we, what we saw was again, a repeat pattern where there was an unfair auction and that unfair auction had to be completed in fact it you know got completed but it went higher than the uh, than the news right so many traders might have been like well what happened there well it was all about FOMC right and it was still about the liquidity because um, you you know the market was still expecting the, the Fed to be hawkish right it was still expecting you know dot plots we spoke about this in yesterday's video um, where the, the Fed were expected to potentially continue to hike in, in November or December um, to be hawkish, etc. So um, although this was completed this by the um, by the uh, by the market makers um, with the expectation that the, 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 the dollar was a, uh, a potential buy. Right. And with traders probably looking at short trades anyway. Yeah. Because this move would have would have drawn in so many short traders with so much liquidity being built up above these levels, yeah. 
around these highs, these highs as well. You can see it builds up. These these are you know levels that um, traders would have been building liquidity and trying to short. Um, the market maker just takes them all out. Yeah, gets to the actual auction high. Yeah, which was here, right? In anticipation of again providing liquidity for the um, for the for the institutions. And so um, yes, overall the pound was you know a sell from here but you can get situations where of course nobody knows how far the liquidity is going to go right but if we looked at this from example i don't know like a one hour chart right then we would have known and this is why i say typically i wouldn't even bother uh looking at this area as a you know a start and start selling here but what really you know you would have so, or supposed to really be looking at is the fact that this is the high of the range. So you've got lower highs, lower lows, right? You've got a low there, you've got a high there, you've got a low there. So that is in fact the auction, yeah? And then the auction goes all the way up to where that uh, lower high was, lower low, lower high. So that potentially is the auction. That's the bargain price. This was a bargain here, that was expensive. Prices came back up to the bargain just before the uh, the FOMC meeting. So not that. Yep, right up into that eighty percent area, especially after um, you know the pound had you know inflation had come down, took out all the liquidity above the market on that hourly time frame chart, or you know thirty minute, fifteen minute doesn't really matter, but took out all the liquidity before. Yeah, before rolling over again. Yeah, and I think the same thing is likely happening on um, a pair. You know, the pair here, where um, you know the the auction is likely to be completed. Yeah, uh, maybe in the short term, potentially, maybe, maybe not. Right, and if it does, I think it should want to roll over and continue going um, lower. And that's, I think, that's going to be the same thing for. Um, most uh, pound pairs, like I said, unless um, the other pair, whether it's the base or the quote currency that you're trading the pound against, um, has a bit of um, some fundamental uh, news that isn't great. But um, yeah, I think you, know, you can uh, you can look at even the the, the the CAD, something like the CAD Swiss is the same thing. So you can see here, um, there's a little bit of a stop hunt there. Uh, so you can see where stop hunts are playing out, but if prices do come back down into, if they ever come down into these zones and kind of complete this area here, as much as when we zoom out, we're on the, you know, we're, we're trading really at highs, really above this two week uh, fair value, I would still uh, look potentially to get involved in this, all right, with a stop below here, simply because it was a surprise um, hold, right? Although it made sense for the Swiss franc to hold, of course, um, it was still a surprise to the market. You can see that unfair auction. So if prices ever do come back down here, I think that's gonna be a nice uh, trade as well. Uh, you know, buying at highs, right? So um, although never say never, um, I'm just putting this out there if you do want to. You can obviously not take this trade if you do feel that it's still too expensive or let's say for example price could hover around this area here for a while wait for the moving averages to move in fair value to kind of catch up then wait for a pullback to come down to it right so you know by the time you know maybe next week comes along because prices will always pull back but if you do want to get involved in this and buy at highs and take a small position just in case it works out and prices go higher then it makes all the sense in the world but i would only ever suggest this based off of some really surprising news, right? Very surprising news um, and a shock uh, like this. And when you see, you know, unfair auctions that need to be completed. So hope that helps. Take care, speak to you soon. Good afternoon all. So I thought I'd uh, do a trade update. I made a video yesterday with regards to, um, uh, it's called uh, the pound rate hold shorts at expensive prices explained and why I was um, uh, shorting at lows which you know I told you guys not to do but there was a situation where I thought oh you know what it's just you just felt too 
good not to, do you know what I mean? Considering the whole environment and the whole scenario. So you can watch this and um, if you haven't watched it before and uh, basically it's just a quick video to show you what the trade, you know, trade update <clears throat> and the, uh, the, the pound Aussie managed to get some decent profit somewhere around a two to one, somewhere around here took profits um, this morning now. Um, some people might say, well, why didn't you hold until, you know, until that low there? And um, I was thinking about it yesterday and I thought maybe we could see, you know, prices potentially bounce back and there was some news here, which, you know, potentially could have gone against me. Um, I entered into a few positions, so it was, you know, there was there was a bit of a pullback on here as well. So um, I'd got some really good, you know, risk reward in a few trades. So um, I thought I'd take profit at, you know, at obvious range uh, lows around there, maybe around about the eighty percent area. Um, so that was the uh, the pound um, uh, Aussie. I mean, I could have zoomed out. And um, you know, look to target you know further down, which you know, uh, again, <clears throat> you have to, I have to, I have to just be. I'm, I am happy with you know the profits, and this could have gone a lot further. Of course, could have been a really nice uh, trade, but I figured I'd just take some some profit because I was I was in the uh, the pound um, the the pound uh, dollar as well, so um, ended up getting in the pound dollar around this area, which was again I was highlighting was a bit of a CPR and also the fact that, you know, we had, um, uh, you know, the, the scenario that had happened, um, did enter into a couple of positions around here. So again, got some really nice um, uh, uh, prices, nearly got stopped out, matter of fact. Um, I was thinking, you know, I hope prices don't go too far above this, but luckily they didn't. So, um, so yeah, it was. I did it around the uh, 11, 12, so I think it was my stop loss just above here, just in case it was coming up, and it did manage to come up. But then, like I said, entered into some really nice positions. Got you know, took uh, the majority of my profit off this morning around these areas here. So <clears throat> uh, yeah, it just goes to show uh, that you can short uh, at lows, but you have to have really the environment to do it, and. Um, uh, yeah, I would say definitely watch the previous video. I'm not going to go over it here, but watch the previous video. But just to give you a bit of an update as to you know what happened. Of course, there is um, for, uh, some good fortune here. Probabilities, nobody knows. This could have gone the other way, right? But um, but yeah, it actually went in the direction. And again, same thing. I could have you know potentially carried on holding uh, trades, but because I was because I was you know shorting at lows, I just thought that there's the the possibility that prices could come back, you know what I mean, and, and maybe not break through. So that's the reason why I took profit, you know, around there. Same thing with the, uh, uh, again, pound, pound Aussie. I just thought that the risk reward was decent. I mean, some profit, um, uh, some multiple positions. So I thought, you know what, this is, this is decent. And yes, prices could have gone and prices have gone. Now I can just wait for a pullback. So anyone who's not in this trade, <clears throat> You can start to wait for a pullback, yeah. So as uh, the moving to two week moving fair value starts to come down, there are some levels that you can look towards uh, shorting. You know, somewhere around here. You can even look at this area here. So that, so this the area up above looks like a stop hunt. You've got various touches on that pound, Aussie. You know, shorting that pound. If you do want to get in on this on this trade. There's something there. Also, as well, um, you do have a level where this is a CPR now, so you can try to look for some short trades in and around here. Um, yeah, so that's so that's really where you know where we are. And again, just buying it at value. So I've taken profit now. I'm just looking for a decent pullback if it can pull back, and you know it may or may not soon, but. Uh, Anywhere around here is going to be, you know, nice for a setup. You could also look for this again, but this is more shorting at, at lows. That would be more of a level CPR. And especially as the news comes out, you know, around here, it reacts, but then it just drops. So, in fact, the underneath of here could be a decent trade. If, again, you're very, very bullish. I don't recommend shorting at lows 
personally, I've made some money on this, so now I'm going to be patient and wait for a decent pullback. Do you know what I mean? Um, so that would be my advice. But yeah, there was you know the whole scenario around shorting the pound at, at lows uh, came about, and uh, it's played out quite nicely. Anyways, guys, um, again, watch this. Obviously, you're watching this video, but also go back and watch. Um, you know. Uh, the reasons why I was uh, I was getting short on these pairs as well. All right, guys, take care and speak to you soon.